Hey guys, welcome back to another video. Um, we are here um, at St. Govan's Chapel right now. Um, it's just about down below us right here and we'll go over a little bit over the legend um, of St. Govan and why this chapel was built here. Um, and then we're going to take a little bit of a walk over to Govan's Head, St. Govan's Head. Um, I had hoped to go to Huntsman's Leap, but the firing range is currently in use, so we're not going to be able to make that. So anyway, let's go ahead on down uh, to St. Govan's Chapel and check this out. It's an absolutely stunning location. So the legend behind St. Govan is that um, back in the 5th and 6th centuries, 7th centuries, that uh, Celtic missionaries would tra traverse the coast, they travel up and down the coast, um, you know, spreading the word of Christ. Um, but of course this was very uh, pirated water as well. So the legend goes is that he was being pursued by pirates when a cleft um, opened up in the rock and let him hide inside until the pirates were gone. Um, and he stayed there using that as a place of worship, this place right here, um, as a place of worship until he died. Um, this chapel actually wasn't built until the 13th century um, and it has been lovingly restored. So this wasn't the original, I mean it is the original chapel, but it was not in this good of a condition. Um, but it's currently owned by the Ministry of Defence, which is quite interesting since there's a firing range up there. What an amazing place to come check out. What an amazing view. Amazing location. You got like those two couple of sea arches right through there as well, which currently is making for some very dramatic um, splooshing. Uh, anyway, we're gonna climb back to the top and head on over to St. Govan's Head um, and then see maybe they'll be done on the firing range but I'm not super hopeful. Yeah, great stop. Um, so right behind us over here, St. Govan's Head. That's where we're gonna head next. Um, shouldn't be too long of a walk. Um, definitely not as far as Stackpole from the last video. Uh, definitely underestimated how far that one was, but uh, so we're gonna head out there. I've left the dogs in the car because there is a firing range around here and I don't like them getting spooked and you just never quite know with that. So. We're just going to take a quick walk out there and hopefully we can see some wildlife. So we just came across this, which I'm assuming is a bunker. Um, they've got a, a sign over here that says, who lives in this block house? Well, my guess is, is it was an old um, bunker that's no longer used, potentially maybe munitions, but because of the way it looks out over the water, um, that is my guess. I don't have any cell phone service out here, so I can't even look it up. But being that this is a military area, um, that would be best guess. And if somebody actually knows when it was retired, I guess, what exactly it was used for, please comment down below. I'd love to know. Um, but we're walking on to St. Govan's Head. This is one of those places that's definitely been loved to death. The amount of erosion from footfall. So there are totally guys climbing down these cliffs right here. That is absolutely nuts. If you fall, you're going in. So I was trying to figure out what these are for. 
and the climbers were using them. But they're all along this cliff edge. Apparently a very, very popular rock climbing um, area and I know there's a specific name for it when you do it on sea cliffs. Can't think of it off the top of my head, but I'll put it down below. This is just, yeah, I don't know about that one. All right, so I'm in another, I think this is bunker number four, um, but out front of this one, there's a tramway that goes all the way out that direction. Uh, the question is, what was it used for? It keeps asking questions right outside these bunkers. And it's not giving me any information, but um, I really want to know now. Maybe they'll tell me at the, the, the watch station over here on the head. Either that or I'm gonna have to Google it later. Well, this is, this is it, St. Govan's Head. You can't go all the way around because of this building, but, um, and the gate's locked. Um, wow, it's quite a wild sea right now. Um, so anyway, we're gonna walk back along. Um, if the flags are still flying, we obviously can't go and see Huntsman's Leap at this point, but there are a couple more things along the coast I think we should check out. Well, unfortunately, we uh, got back to the car and the red flags were still flying, so we weren't able to go over to Huntsman's Leap or the, the you know, the used, the disused quarry, which both of which I think could have been quite interesting. So we're heading on a little bit further down the road, um, and there's um, some some pretty cool um, sea landscapes, I guess, to check out. So we're gonna go check out those. Um, and hopefully they're as cool as I think they're going to be. Alright, even that was a bust. It seems like everything um, on the western end of the Pembrokeshire Peninsula, island um, area, it's all military um, and not all of it's accessible. Um, and we just got diverted um, and we can't get down to what I was hoping to get down to, which is Green Arch. Um, and some sea stacks and stuff. Um, so we're gonna attempt to go to, I think it's Bull Bay, and there's a cave there, um, and that is right on the edge of the military zone, um, but we'll see. We may not be able to get down there at this point because it will be high tide, um, and we may just wait. So anyway, we're heading that way now, uh, not too far away, and we'll catch up with you guys in a little bit. All right, guys, we are not where I expected to be um, this time. Um, we basically couldn't get anywhere that I wanted to go. Um, all the roads for everything were blocked, or it was a really, really long walk to get there. Um, I had had hoped to go to uh, Bull Bay, and there was a cave there, but it was a really long walk. Anyway, but what I've discovered is um, some mud flats. And the tide is currently going out, um, so it's kind of a unique environment. And of course, it's very, very dangerous too to get out there. It's very easy to get stuck. I've watched more than enough RNLI saving lives at sea um, to know how treacherous they can be, how fast the tide can come in. So anyway, wanted to come check them out because they are kind of a unique environment um, compared to the rest of the coast. So. We're gonna have a look at that. We're gonna do a short walk around there. Um, we're currently on Lorenny Key, and um, I think we're gonna finish up um, just on the other side. Um, yeah, I'm a little flustered. It's today. It just hasn't gone as planned.
you can definitely tell how much the, the sea could just take out all of this because you got this one's already fallen off you got that one right there it's about to go over there's another one back there that just hanging on for dear life and quite crazy oh my god look at this one <laughs> look at that one that's nuts absolutely crazy lots of white water out there still there white horses So while these mud flats might be treacherous to us, they, um, they have an abundance of food in them and they are hugely popular with things like oyster catchers and anything with those long bills that digs down and um, looks for all the food, the, the food in the mud. So they're like a, a very uh, rich environment for food. So anyway, Cody's disappeared up the staircase. <laughs> we're just gonna go check out what's there. And then I think we're gonna head back and check out a couple things on the other side. Sometimes it's good to follow your dog. We've now ended up literally just off the beach into this beautiful deciduous woodland that is providing just a little bit of protection from the wind um, all the leaves aren't quite out, we're still, it's still spring, early May, so we're still getting some of that really beautiful sunlight through. Um, and we're now in um, the woodland, the National Trust woodland, Lorraine um, woodland, which is part of, it's owned by the National Trust anyway. Well, the one thing I'll give this place is mud flats, they stink. Um, <laughs> it's a very, very strong smell. It's not a good sea salty smell. It's almost like a, I don't even know how to describe it, man. It doesn't smell great, but it smells of nature. That's the important thing. Anything is better than smog or car pollution. I'll take it. Um, but this fence is in the way, so this is St. Mary's Church where the ruins of. It looks like it'd be really cool to go in and check it out, but it does look like it's on private land. Um, I'm not seeing any, you know, private or no trespass signs, but, you know, it does look like somebody's living here. Um, which is a shame. Um, it does look like it would have been very cool to go check out, so. Um, maybe we'll, yeah. So anyway guys, sorry it's been such a haphazard video, it just feels like nothing's gone to plan here. Um, so yeah, it's just nothing's fallen into place today. So we'll head back to the car um, and then let's go find camp. Alright, here we are at camp. Um, just got the car set up, we're about to do a little bit of filming, show you where we're at and it just started pouring down. So bailed into the car really, really fast. So I'll show you as soon as the rain gets done, but right now it's um, not as bad as it was yesterday, but pretty bad. So I don't know if you guys can hear that, but that's actually hail outside. Saw that coming in. Uh, the people who just literally pulled in as I was jumping in the car, I think they walked for about two minutes, turned around, came back. Um, it's definitely one of those times I'm really glad I'm not in a tent, because these, these intense storms just, they don't make things very much fun, but at least they're short-lived, at least it's the one good thing, I take this 
uh, where you can shelter under a tree or shelter under a poncho for 10 minutes over, you know, long, long, prolonged rain for uh, hours on end. All right, well, it doesn't seem like the uh, rain is going to be stopping anytime soon, so we're going to eat dinner. Thankfully, I wasn't planning on cooking dinner tonight, but I'm just going to have these um, and potentially a chocolate bar already on the wine. Um, so anyway, guys, I'm going to leave it here for now um, just because I can't really get out and do anything. So I really hope you guys enjoy this video. I know that it was a little haphazard and a little bit crazy and just kind of convoluted, but I really hope it was still... Um, a half decent video um, and as always guys I really want to appreciate you guys um, and thank you for watching once again take care we'll see you later